Hello everybody, how are we all doing? Today I am taking a little bit of a break from the opal carving, though there is one here, and I'm going to do another wire wrap. Revisiting my good friend Yvonne and another one of her videos, we're going to try to copy it again. This one, I'm going to jinx myself now and say, this one is simple and straightforward and I think I can manage to do it semi-decently. Well, I couldn't have jinxed myself any harder. That was far more difficult than I had anticipated. Unfortunately, again, I'm still using the same dodgy tools. I got some clippers. Uh, this is the amazing fencing wire that I've got. If you can see here, it's uh, two mil, two mil thick, and the tensile strength of a solid piece of galvanized steel. So, not ideal, but I reckon I've got a better plan to work around that this time. This is a bit fancier. I've got myself some uh, copper wire, still from the hardware store. I don't know if it's the same kind of quality as jewellery stuff, but it's for picture, picture hanging, picture frame hanging, or at least that's the section of the shop it was in. So, I've got that as well. Trusty Leatherman. It's got clippers, it's got pliers, it's going to be very useful. Actually, it already has been. And the boulder opal that I've wrapped in the past. Now, why I say the Leatherman has been useful already is because I've tried to be clever about this and I've pre-cut all of my bits. So I'm actually not going to need that. There we are. So let's have a look at this. This is the fencing wire. I've bent it by hand and used the pliers to do this sharper turn. And what this is meant to do is fit nice and snug. See, look at that. That's, that's pretty good, I feel. Nice and snug around the boulder, the boulder opal. These little wires are the ones that are going to go across the back and front down here and then they'll do a little bit of a coil around this edge. One has to go downwards, one has to go upwards. I want an even number of turns around there so I'll clip it. I've given it enough room to get a good, I don't know, three or four, three or four winds and then I'll clip off whatever's left. These two do the same thing up here so one in front, one behind. And then one coils upwards, one coils downwards. And then I've got this longer piece of copper wire that is going to tie these two rabbit ear bits together. And then because this is so high tensile, I'm not going to do any kind of fancy, fancy kind of bale on top of this. All I'm going to do, because these two will be pulled together by the copper wire and my fingers, jeez is that strong. Because those two will be bound together, I'm simply going to take this and I'm just going to curl it back and then have these two little end bits just touching the back here. Because this boulder is only one-sided and the other side's pretty uggles, this side I don't really care how it looks from here, so I'm happy to have these bits exposed. I should probably file them down, but I'll have these bits exposed and just sitting back here. So hopefully you don't see it at all. But yeah, that is the game plan. I'm hoping to get it all done in one take. But we'll see, we'll see if that's just wishful thinking. Now Yvonne's tutorial is the one to follow. Don't follow mine. I'm not up to, not up to the standard for a teacher of this kind of stuff. That is for sure. My piece is a little bit different to hers. She had like a, uh, I think she was using an oval, whereas I'm using a pear-shaped teardrop and she also had a double-sided one which was curved on both sides whereas I've got this flat side which I'm hoping actually makes it easier because I'm gonna start by doing the piece that goes on the bottom and behind and just curls around here probably at about that distance trying to center it a bit probably about there and then I'll do the top one and then I'll just try to cage the front cage the front in place and it should hold there nicely. Keyword being should. So yeah, 
I'll try to focus now and we'll see how we go.
Well, I couldn't have jinxed myself any harder. That was far more difficult than I had anticipated. I think it's mainly because of this damn fencing wire. I've really got to get some of that. I think they call it half hard. So it's still a thick wire, but I can actually bend it. Because this stuff, even preforming it into that shape I had originally, was still putting up such a fight. Doing this part here, I should have pre-bent this as well before I had the uh, copper wire here and the stone in place. But the other issues I had were, if you look carefully here, you can see that it's a bit wobbly. Now I don't know how to avoid that. I think it's because I used my pliers to try to pull it across because I think I needed a little bit more space over here to get these two coils in place. So I was trying to like tension it across when really I should have kept this as smooth as possible as carefully as I could. Same here, I've done the same mistake. Which is unfortunate because this is the front and the back I did almost perfectly. <laughs> so straight line, a slight bow but straight line. And then the front, I, the front is the one that I mess up and put the teeth marks into and everything. So that was unfortunate. I, sh I tried to get, I just got too clever and tried to pre-cut these lengths. And for some reason, this, I couldn't get the three coils. So you can see I went one, two, three and the line. But the second time around, because I was doing it from this side, I got one, two, three. Well, yeah, one, two, three one two three on that side but on this side it comes out as one two so I ended up matching that on both sides so one two I don't want these ends to finish here I kind of now that I look at it I want them to finish back here at the back so you don't see it like I did up here up here that pre-cut line once again I got one two three on the bottom perfect but I only had enough space for one two at the top actually I think I did that purposely because this one had already gone to one two so I had to match that that was a very loud car going past. Uh, the bale, it was really easy to wrap this stuff. So this copper wire, this stuff over here, if I can grab that big off cut, this is actually really nice. So unlike that other stainless steel stuff, this does bend pretty well. It doesn't bend back very well, which is why it can get that wrinkly, wrinkly look that I got over here. So I guess that's unavoidable with a lot of wire. Maybe softer wire is a bit better to smoothen out once you've made a kink. But this stuff is much easier to use, but I've really got to, I've got to throw out the rest of this fencing wire. It's designed to keep horses in paddocks, cows in paddocks, kangaroos if you build it high enough. It's not designed for any kind of jewellery making, that is for sure. So I need to get some sort of, I don't know, maybe even just thicker copper. I like the look of this copper with the boulder. So, I mean, the... Silver grey kind of colour goes pretty well with it. Gold goes okay with it. I don't really like gold very much. But this copper, is it's just that rustic earthy look that really matches the rustic earthy look of a boulder opal. So I want to get more copper. I need to find somewhere that sells the thicker, the thicker stuff. Because this stuff, bending that was impossible. But also I wanted to cut off this little bit here. So these two prongs, I've tried cutting them off with my um, snippers here, these ones, which are pretty strong, but I can't just snip straight through. I have to do a lot of bending and there was no room to get the bending right. So I can't even snip through them. I need to get the Dremel out and a cutting blade to cut through that because that's impossible. So I've learned a few things. I don't mind this wrap. I mean, the stone, when it comes to opal, you want as much exposed as possible. I would be interested to see this same design, but have this front bar higher up here. And this one kind of, it's in the right spot there, I think. But this one higher to get that full face here. I guess it depends on the stone. If the pattern is nice up over here, then keep that exposed. If the pattern's got a dull, dull spot here, cover it up, that kind of thing. The other really good thing about this, this design of Yvonne's is that this is not coming out. I can't get this out to save my life. I tried because I thought about redoing it, like just cutting this and this one and just redoing it so that you guys didn't see the uh, failed failed attempts. But then I thought, nah, keep it. Keep it genuine. It was a first attempt. This is what it came out like. But yeah, I can't get this stone out. So I'm actually gonna have to clip these to free this stone again. 
So if you've got a if you've got a stone that you worry will come loose with such a simple four wire kind of design, don't be scared because this thing is not going anywhere. I don't know if it's just because this wire is incredibly hard, but this is locked in place. It's it, I can't move it a millimeter. Even that little gap over there, I can't shift the stone over there to fill that in. It is absolutely snug. There's not a gap around it. So yeah, I really like I really like the wrap. I wish I'd done it a little bit better, but I think I'm really limited now just by this wire. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to hunt around, and I'm going to find some better wire. So I can do justice to some of Yvonne's designs. There's a couple other that I, others that I want to try. Um, I think I will revisit this one with a better wire in the future. Because I really like the potential of this design. You can shift these higher or lower. Show off exactly the parts of the stone you want. Really doesn't cover a lot. And yeah, once again it's another design with no hole going through the stone. So I love that. That's probably my favorite part of some of these wire wraps. You don't actually have to drill a hole through, which is really nice. But yeah, that's enough rambling on this one. It was fairly successful. I like the design. You can execute it pretty easily. I jinxed myself a little bit, but I think if I had better wire, I would be absolutely set and this wouldn't be outside of my skill range so far. So I think we'll creep up another difficulty level. I don't know what Yvonne would rate this, but compared to the Viking wrap, it's if the Viking wrap was a 1, the other design that I tried was a 10, I'd put this at maybe a 2 or a 3. Literally just shape this to the stone, wrap four wires around it, wrap some wires around the bale. Dunzo. So give it a try. If you want to follow along with the video, don't follow along with mine, follow along with Yvonne's. She spends 20 minutes going through this step by step and she does it beautifully. So I'll link that in the description as per usual. And yeah, have a good day guys.